All right, color theory. I know you guys are busy on your logo, finishing your identity package, getting that all ironed up, crossing your T's, dotting your I's, making it all look super, super nice, right? Mm -hmm. totally. That's awesome. For Friday, we're going to need three versions of a packaging design, right? So your logo's got to be looking pretty good so you can put them on your package design. But now you have to take your package and start putting it together, putting all your elements together. So if we look into your folder structure, you'll go over here. Um, you can see you should have your assets in here. And within the assets, you should have a template from Illustrator in which you'll be creating your packaging design. If I were you, I would open up your template right now. You also will have a photo, which gives you a kind of crop version of what this packaging does look like. You have already been assigned your packaging template, so that's the one you gotta rock with. Whether you love it, hate it, dislike it, you just show me how good of a designer you are, and you're gonna make it look good, right? So let's open up our Illustrator template. <clears throat> Let me know when you guys, ladies and gentlemen, are closer to getting your Illustrator follow. -up. Does everyone have it open? Yes. All right. Who loves their template? Great success in my country. We call this Wawa Wiwa. All right. Now, who has a fill with this stripe? I do. All right. Okay, I want you to go to this little box over here with these stripes. Would you select it? I want you to go select same fill color. Same fill color. Yes, sir. If you don't have it, you're good. All right. All right, now I want you to fill it in with a gray or a white, just another color. This, we had put this on there for you to know where you would glue your packaging. The problem is you guys left the black lines consistently every single time. You would leave these black lines on your overall design. And when it prints, it looks terrible. So get rid of it now. All right, I'll walk you through what parts need to be glued and what parts don't need to be glued. I don't want to see those lines when I print them out. Yes, sir. Yours already what? I know. That's why you're going to do select these lines. Select this box. Go select same fill color. It's just select all those boxes that have these lines in there. And then you want to go to your swatches and make it a, a gray or a... Whatever color you want. I don't want to see any more stripes in your packaging. Okay. At this point in time, I want you to go file, save as. File, save as. All right. Make sure you have a copy of the original version. In case you lose any of the pieces or elements of the packaging while you're designing, you could always open up the original Illustrator file and get any piece from that original packaging design. So save as, in this case, I would be, um, well, I'm gonna name mine CTH because it's gonna be a CTH uh, box, but for y'all, it'll be whatever your packaging name is. So if it's Peacock, if it's Forced Chocolate, I would name it that. Make sure you have a second version of this, so that way if you delete anything by accident while you're staying up all night working on your roughs, you can go back to the original uh, template and get that piece that you want. All right, hit save. Okay. Now let's go over the template. Um, these are all roughly the same. So you have an outline, you have the individual panels, and you have your die cut. All right, I'm gonna turn off my outline and my individual panels. Do any of you know what a die cut is? 
all right this is the cutout that they make to Im to do an imprint onto your um, your printout so while it's going through the machine it's getting printed out they got a razor blade that's shaped in this side right here it's shaped like this and it will press down and cut out your packaging template out of the paper and then move it along cut move it along cut move it along all right so that's normally going to be your overall the whole packaging together as one piece before it gets folded is your die cut all right if you get stickers made and you know there's in a circle they normally have a lot of those uh stickers print shops that do stickers they have a die cut for the circle so they have a template which they're going to print your stickers on and then this the roll of stickers runs through there and they press that die cut down so they get that circle on it every time because no one's going in there and cutting them out individually and they're not using a laser to cut them all out right they're using that die cut it's going to be that shape so anytime you see a box and you're like well how is that cut they print it out flat die cut comes in cuts it out and then they fold it from there so that's going to be your overall the whole packaging right there so if i unlock this and i select it you can see it's everything right so i'm going to lock this back up turn this layer off then i'm going to turn off individual panels looks a little different right not crazy different but a little different if i take my direct selection tool which is the white arrow right i can select on these individually So I can go over here, now I have individual panels here. So if I want to put a color over here and then change it up once I go over here, I can do so. All right. There is some problems here, though, in which you would have to problem solve depending on your design. So if I wanted this panel to be a different color than this panel, and I select on it, I say, Omar, these aren't separate shapes. What do I do? Give up. If that's what you want to do, Hope. It's not because of a group. It's just one shape. Divide it. You can divide it. So if I have this shape here, one, this is a square right here, right? So I can go over here and just make a square. All right, that's pretty easy. Both of these are pretty easy, right? So I could just take this, option drag it over here, and now there's their separate shapes. If I could do individual things if I wanted to. All right, over here, I try to click on this handle, but it's, it's grabbing everything. What do I do? I'm in my direct select. All right, you can go in here, pen this out, but if I, if I take a step back and look at the overall packaging, what do I have over here? Same thing. Right? So, whenever you get a little problem in your packaging and you want to fix something, one, it's just shapes. You know how to use the pen tool, you know how to use Pathfinder, and you know how to make shapes. So, don't let that be a deterrent or hold you back from doing anything that you want to do creatively. All right. Sexy, let's wake up over there. He's out. Michael. Michael. What do you know about your packaging? Yeah. I know you're O-U-T. And that's not a new club we're going to, right? No. No. Out. <laughs> help me help you. All right. All right. Okay. So, these are all the individual panels that you have here. 
Then you go over here and you have your outline. I'm going to turn off these. And you have your outline. The hard black line, the stroke, is going to be your cut line. The da dotted lines, the dashed lines, are your fold lines. Well, it's kind of already set up for you. You can't mess it up unless you go out of your way to do so, Hope. Well, I keep confused between the solid lines and the dotted lines. Okay. There's a visual difference there. Why is it around? You can't swap them. You can't even edit them. All right, so on that layer, that's locked. All right, you don't have to mess with that. You can see your overall design there. I would make another layer and call it my design. Put all of your elements on there. All right, so now what you want to do is, so I have all these other layers locked. I'm going to start bringing the elements that I should have for my um, project. All right, so I'm going to go over here. And so I've already created some assets for it. So I got my logo over here, uh, right? I have this, I'm gonna copy it. I'm on my design layer, paste it in here. I'm also, I have this little pattern that I have right over here. I'm gonna copy that and paste it over here. Start getting my elements over here. Um, you should have your barcode. So if you go into your assets folder, you should have a barcode with no price on it. You can open that up, select it, copy it, paste it over here. Remember to have a white box go around your barcode. You should also have a price when it comes to your barcode. So normally, traditionally, you'd have like a date and a price on here. So place it on there. Type that in. Okay? If you have nutrition facts, you can create them. Find them on the internet. You don't have to design it from scratch. All right, they have label makers. You could Google um, nutrition fact label makers, and then you could just type in the facts in there, and it'll create a PDF for you. Yes. Yes. So I can go into here, and I have nutrition label here. I'm going to use that. Pull this into Illustrator. You notice that this is not a JPEG. This is actual vector. All right. The one thing that I can't stand is you put all your work into your packaging and then you find a small paper stamp of a nutrition fact label on the web and you place that in there and it looks like it's ripping apart. All right. Find a vector of it, an EPS or a PDF of the label. If not, Google Nutrition Fact Label Maker, and they, they have a website that'll make them, you just type in what the information you want in there, and it'll make you a PDF of the Nutrition Facts. All right, I'm gonna take this, copy them, paste them over here. It's a transparent background. Always make sure there's white behind it. All right, so I have my nutrition fact, I have my logo, I got some elements in here. So now I can start designing, I can start having some fun. So uh, first, I got these colors here. If I go to my swatches, my colors aren't here, right? How can I add these colors quickly to my swatches? What? You could eyedrop them there, yeah. But what if you have a lot of them? Can't you just copy them? 
Now I can select both of these and see this little folder right here? New color group. Hit OK. Now from whatever I had selected, it created a group of all those colors for me. So I'm going to go over here. That over there. Maybe I want this box. Go over here. Unlock my individual layers. I can select the box and um, Just go in here and you start designing or start making things whatever colors you want them to be. All right, so here's my uh, starting point here. All right, I have that on here. Now I can bring my barcode over. Please don't make this super tiny. What do you need in your primary display panel? You need a logo, a photo of what you're selling, the net weight, a descriptive line. If it's tea, what kind of tea is it? If it's coffee, is it dark roast, caffeinated, decaffeinated? If it's a cookie, is it chocolate chip, oatmeal? If it's chocolate, is it milk chocolate, orange chocolate, blood orange chocolate, you know, descriptive line. So, I'm on my design layer, right? Right, and these are all starting points. Do some research, find out what you want to design or don't want to design, what kind of elements you want to bring in here. Um, maybe a little story, a description. So maybe I want to bring in uh, a piece. So maybe I'm selling chocolate. So I'm going to place. And I have this Photoshop file. Right? So you can start designing with that. Now, this is my starting point. On your first packaging rough, get all the pieces of the puzzle there. All right? You want everything that you will need on that packaging to, to put it on your first one. You don't have to love it, just get to a place where you like it, and you're at a starting point. The next thing you're going to do. After you're here, you got all the pieces, this is my first rough, I know I need some more here, but for the most part I got my net weight, I got my, uh, my logo on there, I got an image of what I'm selling, I still need that descriptive line, um, I got my barcode, my nutrition facts, right? So if I go over to my layers, I'm going to unlock everything, make sure that nothing is locked, right? Then I go over to my artboard tool, shift O. And how do I make a copy of an artboard? Options, drag over. Option, drag. 
So as long as everything's locked in there and you option drag that artboard, it's going to take everything that you had there and turn it into uh, another piece. All right, I go to my layers. I can lock them up again. Or in here, I want to start something new. So I have this pattern over here. I go to my swatches. I'm going to drag this chevron into my swatch. I'm going over here. I'm going to select this box. I'm going to make a white. All right. I'm going to go edit, copy, edit, paste in front. All right. And then you see my little chevron right there. I'm going to make that the fill. Now, wherever the chevron's not, wherever it's empty, it's going to be transparent. So that means whatever the color of this is will be my color background. So if this was pink, that means the pink's the background. Hey, can you show me how to do that again? Yes, I can. So I take this right here. I'm going to leave this pink, but I'm going to copy the shape. All right? Copy, edit, paste in front, man F. Right? And then I use my fill with the chevron that I just brought in here. Right? Again, I'm selecting this. Copy. Paste in the front. I select my chevron. Now, if I want to edit my chevron, let's say I want to make it tighter or play around with it, I just double click on my fill, that chevron pattern, and then I could say, well, maybe I want this to go, no, not so much that way. Maybe I want it tighter. So now I made it tighter throughout. All right, and then here. So maybe I want a different chevron, a different color. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to option drag it. Um, let's make it pink, right? I take my pattern or my shape, whatever I want, and I just drag it in here. I select this shape right here. I'm going to copy, edit copy, right? Edit, paste in front, Command F, and now I put in my chevron color, right? In order to edit it, I just double click on the fill, and then I can change my spacing. Right again, if I want to over here, copy, paste in front. All right, I can have some fun with this. Let's say I want to play with some different patterns. I want to play around with some different things. I can go over here and let's say I just do a circle. Or I like I like this a little better. So I like to make like uh, my armor. All right, I'll put a stroke on that. I have my stroke go to the outside. Then I'm gonna object expand appearance or object path outline stroke. All right, so I'm gonna take this. I'm going to drag it into my fill colors. See, I have my stroke. Sorry. All right. That it works. It might be kind of cool. I'm not sure if that's the right pattern for you or what you want to play with. But I can double click on this. I can go over here, and I want it to go like a hex. All right, Whoa. I can go over here and make a tile this way, and then now I'm in inches. Do you think inches is the best way to work for uh, measurement? What should I be working in? And what? Pixels. 
or points. Pretty much the same thing, right? So a quick way to get there is I hit Command R. I have my ruler come up. I can Control Click on this and turn this to points. So now when I double click on here, I have a lot more flexibility. Now it's like a chink in my armor. And you should be having some fun with this overall, right? Let's say I go over here. I want to make another version. Everything's unlocked. Arpo tool, option drag. Right now, I have my die cutter back here, right? I can copy this. I go to my design. I can go edit, paste in front, and drag it up to my design layer. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm, I might even make a new layer for this because I don't want this to mess up any of my other things. I can add textures on here. Right? We're in Illustrator, but we can add textures. So let's say I have some textures over here. Got wood. I don't know why is this so slow today? The texture door. All right, so let's say I want to add this texture to it. This is a grayscale in Photoshop, right? Image mode, oh, it's RGB. I can make it into a grayscale, discard. All right, I got all this texture in here. Save it. All right. I'm in this layer right here. I'm going to go to File, Place, Shift, Command, P. I'm going to go over here where it says Textures. I have my Texture Door, hit Place, and I'm going to drag this over. Right? Now I made that new layer, and I have my texture, and then b behind it I have that die cut, right? I'm going to put the die cut in front of it. I'm going to select my die cut and my texture. And then I'm going to go to Object, Clipping Mask Make, Command 7. Object, Clipping Mask Make, Command 7. Now it clips it to the shape of my packaging, right? But I can't see through it yet. So I can go over here to Opacity and I can put it on Multiply. I can go over here and lower it. I say it's cool. I'm digging it over here. Maybe I don't want it over um, all of my design elements. I might pull it behind here. So it's um it's behind the packaging, but it's not on top over my logos. Yes. Uh, two questions. Yes. One. Uh, the first thing you should do is find out which panel is your primary display panel. So this is going to be your primary display panel. Normal nutritional facts will be on the very back. All right. So if you think about it, you might have things on here like organic, you know, 100 calories or low fat or healthy for you on the front, but the nutritional facts are always going to go on the back. All right. So once you find out what the front of your packaging is. Just drop them in the back. Um, it depends on what your packaging is. Which one's yours? Uh, I think it's the bag. The bag? Not the bag, but like the like tea. Alright, so it's gonna be the one, the far left. This is gonna be your primary display panel on that one. I don't know what it looks like the bag. It's gonna be this one over here. On yours. So you got one, two, three, four panels, right? So the first one is your primary display panel. 
because your this one over here has a little flap that folds over here. So would it be the, the next one that has the same gray uh, box? Would that be the, the right one? It doesn't even have a flap. It's just like a flap. It looks like a paper bag. It's it's like a uh, tea bag. It's like a coffee bag. All right. Um, correct. Yes, I know what it is. So look, one. Look at two, three, four. You have four sides, right? Yeah, that's like the first one's your primary display. Mm -hmm. Your second one is going to be the right side, all right? Then that other one is going to be your back, the third one, and that fourth one's going to be your left side. Right? You could tell because you have those triangles then, they're going to dent in like a um, little milk carton does. All right? You're going to push those in. And that's how that's going to work. All right? So here I brought this texture in there. All right? No memo. Now, uh, you know, you could bring in textures into individual parts if you want as well. So I can go over here. And I go to my individual panels, and let's say I want um, and make a new layer. Okay. Command Shift P. I'm going to go with this wood. Send to the back. Select my shape. Command 7. Not so much. There we go. All right. Then I paste my. I can double click in here. Copy it. Get out. And we can play around and have some fun. So what I want to see from you is I want to see three different looking packaging designs. I don't want to see you design one and say, oh, from the next one, I just um, I changed the panel from blue to teal. And that's it. I want you to explore and try different things. Get inspired. Give me one safe one. And then for the next two, go ham. Hello? All right. Are there any questions? Sure. So you can take. So let's say I want to do polka dots. I go to my swatches, I drag 
this into my swatches. I select my shape, I copy my shape, and I paste it in front so the shape is there twice. I select my polka dot. All right, this is a really tiny polka dot. So I can double click in here, and I want it to do brick and column, and then I need some spacing here. Now I have a half tone in there. All right, I can go in here. So I created this really quick, right? Select that. Um, to make it easier on Illustrator, you know, I could copy this. I would go to Object, Path, Outline Stroke, and then I would make it one shape. So that way, Illustrator's not doing all the calculation every time it repeats this. Um, patterns, if they get a little too complicated, sometimes it could slow down Illustrator while you're working on it. So now I just drag this in here, I go to my fill, copy, paste in front, play around do whatever I want edit it however you want you can go in here and you could you know if you really wanted to let's say I like this but it's too big so one I could drag redrag this in there or I can go right over here to the scale tool and double click on it once I select I have to select the shape double click on the scale tool and say transform object or transform patterns uncheck the object you just want to play with the patterns and say I want it uniform at, you know, say 50% of that size. Hit OK. And now it's smaller. I didn't have to go over there and switch it up. I could also, let's say I'm really feeling this, but I need it rotated. What if one panel is flat, but then my next panel has a slight tilt to it? How do I get that pattern to be consistent throughout? What I can do is... I double click, I select this, I double click on my rotation tool, right? And 
and it's rot this is a circle so you don't see it as much but you can see how it's rotating it and you're just doing that individually all right and you're not editing the original fill you're just doing it on that one all right you can go in here I go to my brushes, I select my artwork and I say new, and I can make this a pattern brush if I want. All right. You do a number of things. Any questions? All right, so how many designs do I need on Friday? Three, Three One, virgins. Two. All right, all complete. Looking good. All right. And I just want to see those three. I don't want to see your whole presentation. I just want to see the three versions of your packaging so that we can critique them, see what's good, what's working, what's not working, and uh, move on from there. Because Monday we're going to print them and put them together. All right. Um, any questions? We're all good? Yes? Um, if you make a texture, does it have to be like on a totally new layer? You could do it on over that as long as the texture is, um, I mean, you could have the texture going over the whole thing if you want. If you want it to be in a shape or to be clipping mask to a certain thing, you need the clipping mask shape to be above the texture okay. in order for that to work. If it's behind it, it's not going to make a clipping mask of it. Okay. All right, so it has to be above it. Um, you can bring in color ones, but if you want to mess with opacities and use multiply, sometimes it's good to make them grayscale. So just go into Photoshop and make a grayscale of it um, so you can have some fun with that. All right? When it comes to textures, um, is it required that we have, that we take our own picture to use as textures or if we use somebody else's textures? Um, if this was uh, closer to like a portfolio class towards the end of the degree, I would say that all the parts need to be yours. Go out there, take pictures, and do that because... I'm more worried about you putting the packaging together. You can use stuff that you get from the web, but just know that that's kind of for position only. Um, and when I say FPO, is as freelancers, um, as designers, you're gonna get clients and you're gonna do some work on things, but you don't wanna invest all that time initially in the beginning if you don't know that's what your client wants. So get something roughly that's around what you want there quickly, show it to me, and if that's the direction we need to go, then you can go back and spend the time on it. But if it's not, don't waste your time making all those textures if you're not going to use them on the final product. You're making three, so give me roughly what you're looking for on there. Uh, just know that as a professional, you're going to want to make those for your final project later on. Since this is education and you're in a very short time frame, I'm okay with you using stuff that you find on the web. Uh, but for the patterns, try to create your artwork. If not, um, you know, I guess you could use other things if you want to. All right, so if you know what you got to do, you're comfortable, uh, go in peace. Enjoy your day so you can start working on Melena's class in like 20 minutes. To get that done. I hate that class. Your class is so much more All right. Um, I would recommend showing me your logo before you leave, or if you have any questions for your packaging, come up here now and let me walk you through anything that's wrong with your packaging or that you don't understand for your packaging, and I will show you what's your primary display panel, what goes where. All right. But please show me your um, your logos and so on. Okay.